All right, last video of the day that I have to do is anime 2022 in a nutshell. I have fallen off quite a bit on my anime watching this last year, even the whole year. Searching for anime has become cumbersome. The anime that I like, like Shield Hero in its third season, third season? Second season, has fallen, fallen flat on its freaking face. And I'm re-watching stuff that I was in the middle of years ago. Uh, me and Skitten were wasting some time the other day and wanted an anime to watch. We didn't know what to put on. And we put One Piece back on. And we are still in the three or four hundreds in One Piece, right? We're nowhere near anything recent. We rewatched the first three seasons of My Hero. You know, we went back and watched some of Attack on Titan that we had missed out on. Uh, that's just kind of where we are in anime right now. Sandman was cool for a minute until I thought it ended and then it just kept going. There are some more things on this list I actually forgot from last time. I'm sure he reminded us of it. So let's get into it. I'm back, bitches. Hello. Ha -ha, I bet you thought you wouldn't get a summer 2022 anime in a nutshell, did you? But how could I when last <laughs> I season wouldn't. we got Spy X family completely taking over, your boy Kong Ming dropping some fat bars, Summertime Renda being the sleeper hit stuck in Disney jail, Shikimori-san proving she's not just a cutie, She's also boring as fuck. But also, yeah. we saw the unthinkable happen. Kaguya Summer took over Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as the top rated anime on Mao. That's right, the king of anime has been dethroned by a rom com. What an exciting time to be an anime fan. And you know what? I had to come back because who knows? Maybe we can even find something to compete with that this summer. Because this season we have. Your stepmom's daughter is my ex. <laughs> hey, <go> <laughs> Alright, that's wild. Huh? Oh. It's getting started like that. Damn, bitch, you live like this? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hold on guys, this oh, is a rare occasion, shit. so just let me be that guy for a second. <clears throat> Oh uh, yeah, so I read the manga for this already. <laughs> yeah, Fikashi no Uta, or Call of the Night, is a show you should have already been highly anticipating because you're a true Gigguk fan and watch all the videos I put out. Right, guys? Guys? Because I made a video about how much I enjoyed she this manga. And after watching you. these episodes, I nice. feel a new sensation of unrivaled pride watching an anime adaptation living up to a manga that you like. And with that comes this new sensation of overwhelming superiority that I knew about Glorious this manga before the anime. Race. Oh no. I'm turning into Joey. The real beauty of this story is how it captures the sense of freedom and serenity of wandering the streets at night. At least it does in Japan. I don't know if you get the same experience at 3 a.m. doing a casual stroll through Brixton. Jesus. And the anime absolutely nailed it. The color palette, the music, the atmosphere. If lo-fi was an anime, this would be it. The show is V-I-B-E-S, lowercase, double-spaced lettering vibes. Not to mention the soundtrack has been absolutely godly. Not just the atmospheric tracks, but pretty much every insert song, opening and ending has been an absolute Bob. This is setting the standard for the rest of the season, but before I talk about the rest of the show, Lucifer... Man, that did not pique my interest. It looked, uh, uh, you know, like clickbait, the anime. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wanna look at this girl? You wanna walk around and float? Not really. The Biscuit Hammer. Now, this is one of those titles dedicated manga readers just won't shut the hell up about. This is a classic manga that's loved by many, so as you can imagine, expectations are high. It's got some big shoes to fill, and... It's there. It's shit. I haven't even <laughs> read the manga and I can feel the disappointment. Watching this feels like watching the animation equivalent of room temperature beer. It's Damn. not horrible, it's just flat. Like your mum. Eh. What I see is a highly beloved piece of work being adapted at a level that satisfies absolutely no one. And you know guys, I might not have read this manga, but I get it. I too have seen my favorite doujins animated by Queen Bee. Anyway, now for something completely new. Never. From the author of The Strongest Sage with the Weakest Crest comes... Oh, I remember that. I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. They're the same picture. Alright, I'm just being facetious, but I don't know why this guy chose being the strongest sage to be his gimmick. Find me a guy who thinks this is a cool original hook, and I'll find you a guy who gets stupidly excited over the millionth isekai. <laughs> It's back! It's back! I never thought this day would actually come! We've done it, boys. We've memed another season into existence. But remember, the fight isn't over yet. 
I normally like turn. to gloss over the sequels to give room for new shows, but I feel like the season is just so top loaded with sequels. We waited nine years for Devil as a Part Timer, giving us back the original McDonald's Isekai. Classroom of the Elite is back after five years to save us from that hell of what a cliffhanger that? they ended on. Tokyo Mew Mew is back after 20 years with Tokyo Mew Mew New. Cindy's really excited <laughs> Yo, about this Mew, one Mew, because Mew. it's one of the shows that got her into anime, and I'm really excited because it sets up for one of the best sequel names of all time if we get an eventual sequel to it. Tokyo Mew Mew New New. Daimachi has reached its fourth season. Same with Overlord. You know, I as much as the scene. about that one. The time I picked up a girl with a dungeon bullshit. Mew Mew New New. Oh, Daimachi shit. Is that first season was fucking fire, actually reached its fourth season. Same with Overlord. Overlord you know, as much as the CG ruined some of the moments in season three, I've still got high hopes for this new season. My anus is fully prepared for more child torturing, Lovecraftian, horror-induced existential dread in Made in Abyss season two. Shout out to my boy Kevin so Penkin for doing some of his best work yet with the music, because I gotta say, fucking biblical. Somebody told me not to watch Made in Abyss. Is that still the story on that? Like, should I still not be watching that? Because I feel like I could. But look, the amazing sequel train doesn't stop there as we have Rent a Girlfriend Season 2. <laughs> Bro, he keeps dunking on shows, so I don't know if I should watch him or not. <laughs> Another season of one guy engaging in the most maidenless behavior in the history of mankind. Yeah, As a manga reader, I'm still waiting for the day someone rents Kazuma some grass so he can finally touch it. I don't even know why he's allowed near any elderly people in the hospital. Surely that's a health hazard because... <laughs> Because surely they'd be in danger of dying of cringe. If you want some of the best girls this season, you can just appreciate Yofukashi no Uta. Instead of tuning in on this and watching Kazuma out there appreciating Yofukashi no bitches. If you told me in 2013 that one day I'd be watching a Ruby anime coming from Studio Sharp and Gen Robuchi, I would have slapped the shit out of you to wake you up Ruby from your weeb fantasy. Lit. So I'll be the first to say, well, slap me silly and call me Chris, because dear call lord, just Chris. look at this glow up. Yeah, it needed it, because it was pretty dope. I'll watch it. The only thing that makes me sad is that I only wish Montium was here to see the fruits of his effort. Because even with cuts like this, there's just something about his choreography. The way his battles have a certain fluidity. Actions that flow from one to the next to the next to the next. Like a tempo to a song, it was magical to watch. God, and will it look that fucking bad? Never be matched, even in a beautifully animated show like this. The man really was a genius. But honestly, who cares about the fight scenes? I know the real reason we got a full anime budget was to see some full 4K HD cookie eating Sakuga action. This is the real glow up we needed. All right, the cookies. Let me see her eating the cookies. Oh my god, there it is. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> One out of ten. Worst adaptation ever. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just sorting out some trouble on my Discord server. Oh, I can help mod that if you want. Wait, you mod Discord servers? Yeah, I mean, if you've got a subreddit or stream on Twitch, I can help you mod that as well. You're a Discord mod, Reddit admin, and you mod Twitch chat too? Hmm. <laughs> oh, damn, this is... My my freaking fan fell at the exact same time. It's really great looking show. When A1 Pictures want to turn it on, they can really turn it on. Which is a shame because it feels like I'm watching a forgettable early 2010s anime in 2022. You got a Yandre with pink hair, a Tsundere ex-girlfriend, people making out in 4K Sakuga, and a Ew. dreary deadbeat version of Now Fumi that every girl seems to be fawning over for some reason. I mean, what am I missing here? Is he a nice guy? Does he have a good personality? Is he rich and famous? Is he a not related by blood sibling? You remember that show, <laughs> The Detective is Already Dead from last year that had amazing action scenes like this and everyone's been talking about since? Huh? Huh? No, you don't. Yeah, this is going to be one of those shows. Is what I would be saying if I didn't live stream my opinion about it, only to be told. Promise that it gets better by episode three. And after watching it, I gotta say... It was alright. It's shit. Big titty, ada ada succubus wearing the virgin killer sweater. Nice. That's... That, that's the show. China more. Wait a minute. Summoning a familiar to make a contract with them where you have to feed them mana via bodily fluids to have them stick around? Mad. This is just fate, except it's really horny. This is just fate, except it's got a big titty character with Ada Ada energy. This is yeah. just fate, except the viewers are just raging degenerate. This is just fate. We've got a show about young magical girls hanging out at their dorms at a mage academy or something. Cool. I believe this one's called Tiny Witch Academia. There's also reverse to Somebody told me that shit was lit. 
So yeah. for all of you who are looking for a cute rom-com this season, Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. Now, this is a cute one. Another show to add to the daughter simulator genre of anime. But unfortunately, we now live in a post-Anya world who has just completely broken the daughter meta. Look, this girl's adorable and all, but where's the meme faces? Where's the waku waku? Where is the elegance? Honestly, when your daughter game is this strong, I don't know how anyone else is meant to compete. Don't you be a fucking idiot about this. You knew this shit. You knew this shit. This does nothing. You know Are you an idiot? It, do it actually works. Are you you're really fucking blind? You're really blind? Oh, if I had a dollar for every pharmacy isekai anime that's aired, I'd have three. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened three times in one year now. Out of all the pharmacy isekai though, this one definitely grabbed me the most. You have an esteemed medical researcher being isekai into a world where the understanding of medicine is primitive at best, while also being given the power to diagnose any illness with just a look and the ability to create any substance as long as he knows the chemical compound of it. That's pretty sick. My cook crystal meth. Having all the tools he yeah. needs to completely revolutionize the world's medical system. Honestly, this was pretty interesting. And the most disappointing thing about it is that we have yet another death by overwork isekai. Which is just depressing now, let's be real. Like, does anyone miss the simpler days of truck -un? Come on, man, you've been slacking <laughs> recently. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Uh... <laughs> They're memeing us. You fell off. So when I first saw the title, Uncle oh, from another- Oh, I've seen like an- I just watched like an episode of this this morning. I'm glad it's on the list. It's not bad. The world, I was like, God damn. They really are just throwing words on the dartboard and adding another world to it. But it turns out this was one of the best parodies of Isekai I've seen. Yeah, I'm gonna skip through it so I don't get any spoilers, but it's pretty good. I've also seen the first episode of this one. Comedy. <laughs> Oh boy, your stepmom's daughter happened. is my ex. I appreciate that I tried to find a more tasteful way to say I used to date my stepsister, but you can say shit like, I kind of fancy my first cousin first removed a dad's stepsister's daughter, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you still just said you want to fuck your sister, mate. If I'm being real, I was actually expecting a bit more spice with a title like this, oh, but this no, is way more wholesome be... than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be super vanilla. I thought it was just like a comedy. Like they got some proper sibling bickering going yeah. on. Where's the spice? It's looking a lot less like domestic. Domestic ex girlfriend, and more like Kaguya Summer with a side of. Oh, love me, sister. Hey, sister. This ain't a full on dumpster dive just yet, it's just a casual rummage through the dustbin. Oh my god! Alright, this one actually looks half decent. Out of the two anime original A1 oh, pictures sci-fi show with cute girls in them, this one seems like the one to watch. You got some kind of secret defense force made up entirely of cute anime girls, because of course they are, focused on preventing crimes before they happen. What really stands out is the action direction the and gun battles. The choreography for Jeez. these gunfights feels like a mix between grounded this action films the and the gun martial arts of Equilibrium. Yeah, Which I was about to say that, bro. Equilibrium was one of the, my favorite freaking movies, man. It's so freaking good, dude. I'm wearing this freaking sweater, by the way. It's hot as hell, so I have this fan down here trying to like, get myself some air. It's not working in Vegas. But it reminds me of Equilibrium. I think this is the one. I think Which this is the is one. pretty damn cool. Also, I know what I said before about Best Girl this season, but that might actually go to Chisato. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. This is the kind of energy I need in my life. But beyond her natural charm, she's able to dodge bullets like she's in the bloody Matrix See? and can handle firearms like an assassin on crack. That's right. She's waifu Keanu Reeves. Right. Would you like to buy this slave? Slave? Did you say she was your slave? I think that's the one. I was kind of dry this whole bit, man. I didn't see anything that I hadn't already seen before or anything that really piqued my interest. And then they get girls with guns and some choreographing and all of a sudden I'm interested. Yes. I am shocked. I, like I am appalled. Why is it that every isekai has to include some kind of slavery in some form or another yeah, nowadays? You know, in my world, we abolished slaves hundreds of years ago because it was the right thing to do. And yet here, it's not only accepted, but glorified. You can have sex with her, you know. I mean, can you not see the morality of owning another human being as property? Did you say she'll have sex with her? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for purchasing. I'm gonna say it. 
I'm absolutely watching up. this show. Guy gets isekai and finds out he's in a world where he can buy slaves he can sleep with. So what does he do? Shut he goes out up. to raise money to buy a harem of slaves by killing bandits and collecting their bounties. Shut up. Why is Arnie here committing first degree murder for the promise of pussy? First to say, slavery is one of those tropes in isekai that I think is just the dumbest eye-rolling shit, especially when it's framed as, yeah. oh, look guys, the hero's the good guy for buying the slaves to save them. Honestly, it's fucking brain dead, yeah. This is so deplorable, so unethical that I can't even find it offensive. This is coming from the same studio that made Interspecies Reviewers, and I am not surprised. If you're looking for culture this season with no fucks given, this is it. The show didn't even pretend to have any morals. It stood up, looked us dead in the eye, and literally went, Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Now, I don't want to add into this overplayed trope of slavery in East Kai, but I swear to God, guys, this is a one-off. That's not why I watch it. Look, trust me, not every East Kai needs to devolve into buying slaves as a plot point. Thank you. Are we clear on that? All right, good. Let's see what we got next. All right. <laughs> next time. Okay, all right. Good point at the end. I mean, the whole, like, it's so offensive, it's reversible kind of thing. Bullshit, right? But that's fine. Um, besides that, everything else on the list looks pretty okay. I think we can handle it. Um, yeah, anime is still going in a direction where, you know, there's just some shit that's just up. straight up indefensible. Then why would you do it? Call of the Night. Which one is that? The one he started with? If that shit's good, let me know. It, it looks, uh, I don't know. Just girl with a crop top looks like the whole thing, right? I don't know. Oh, love me, sister. Bro, that shit fucking creeped me out so, so bad, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> People loved it. I'm sorry my face was so nothing when he did that. I, I was not expecting that shit. I was actually daydreaming about how I got, like, rolled into finding this show in the first place is but my... it was on the recently updated list on crunchyroll and i've been trying like just catch up on shit so i've seen everything on that recently updated list and like three of them are like uh pharmacy anime and then one of them is that one and the other ones are overlord and um some other shit that i don't remember this one looks interesting though this uh biscuit hammer biscuit hammer looks decent I spelled biscuit wrong, apparently. I don't know. That doesn't look very interesting. But the big ass hammer, that's a something. The hammer, it is literally a biscuit hammer. God damn it. All right. It has FLCO vibes, though. With seeing like the big hammer and everything. That's got the vibe of that, I guess. But we'll see this. That girl, the one with the girls with the gun, though. What's that one called? That's probably, that's probably the compound of it. Oh yeah, the pharmacy one looks sick too. The best part? He's managed to keep all his powers. World is dope. The one to watch. You got this some one right here. Doesn't really tell you what it's about. There's some girls grabbing butts. There's some girls face to face. Where are the guns? Are there not that many guns in this anime? Is it worth watching? Very fun and entertaining. Watch only the first episode so far. How are you giving a review of the first episode? I guess it's fine, as long as you let me know. All right, well, that's where we are then. We'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, let me know what anime you guys are looking forward to, actually. But that is my time. I'll see you around. Peace.